Good afternoon, everyone. Hi, how are you? Good to see you on this Tuesday. It's a bit gloomy. I heard that we were supposed to get a little peak of sun, but it hasn't come out yet. Uh, but anyway, so happy to see you today. Uh, welcome to the 2022 Kathy Osterman Awards Luncheon. Yes, good afternoon to everyone. I hope everyone's having a fantastic day. We're glad you can all be here to celebrate some incredible city employees and all the ways that they have gone above and beyond this year. Let's give them a round of applause already. Uh, before we go on, we'd love to introduce ourselves. I'm Karen Jordan with ABC7. And I'm Mr. Karen Jordan, also known <laughs> as Christian Farr. Um, I've got to read the script. I'm a reporter at NBC5, also her husband. But today, so honored to be here to once again be your Masters of Ceremony. We did this last year, and they invited us back, which means Karen must have done an awesome job. <laughs> no, we are, this was really, we're honored to be a part of this because I think everyone agrees this is really one of the nicest events of the year and a great way to to wrap up the year as well. So to start today's ceremony, we will be hearing from a few speakers to hear who will share more about what the Kathy Osterman Awards mean. And then we're gonna break for lunch and afterwards we'll be presenting those awards and we're gonna wrap it up from there. All right, first and foremost, on behalf of the city, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Motorola Solutions. Uh, to the teams at Motorola, thank you for bringing this ceremony to life once again. Thank you so much. We'd also like to thank the family of Kathy Osterman for being here and for continuing your proud legacy of public service in the city of Chicago. So for those who don't know, the Kathy Osterman Awards Luncheon has been a tradition in the city for 40 years. Uh, during that time though, the name of the actual awards changed to Kathy Osterman to honor one of our city's brightest public servants. Now, Kathy Osterman served the city in various roles throughout her career, from alderwoman to director of special events. Through it all, she was a fierce advocate with a very, very, very big heart. These awards are presented to city employees who carry on her legacy of integrity, innovation, teamwork, and of course, much more. In recent years, this iconic award ceremony was on hiatus, but last year it was brought back for the first time in seven years, and we're more excited than ever to welcome you to its second year post-hiatus. So last year's ceremony was centered around Chicago's recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. This year, we will be recognizing the individuals who have not only guided us in that recovery, but led us into the more resilient and prosperous present that we're witnessing today. Now, just like last year, this year's Kathy Osterman awardees were nominated by fellow employees within their departments who recognized all of their exemplary qualities. Now, these nominations were then sent to a selection committee made up of volunteers across city departments and sister agencies. The committee evaluated each nomination very carefully carefully based on the nominee's record of integrity and devotion to public service. And from all the incredible nominees, 12 rose above the fray to become today's winners. So we cannot wait to present officially today's awards. Now, before we get to that, we want to kick off things by welcoming the Department of Human Resources Commissioner Chris Owen to the stage to say a few words. Give him a big round of applause. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Chris Owen. I'm the Commissioner for the Department of Human Resources. I'd like to welcome you all to the 2022 Kathy Osterman Award Luncheon. Um, recovery from the COVID pandemic was the overarching theme of this year's awards. As we all know, the past two years have been unprecedented in terms of the challenges that we have faced as a city. 2020 and into 2021 was clearly all about responding to the pandemic. Everything from dealing with lockdowns to getting life-saving vaccines to our residents. And while the pandemic, as anybody in CDPH will be happy to tell you, isn't really over, um, we are in a very different place now as a result of all the hard work that our employees have been doing over the past two years. Um, and this past year in particular has been about moving forward and helping our residents and each other get our footing back. As usual, this is not easy, and other challenges kept coming because they always keep coming. The MPX outbreak, 
and welcoming migrants to our city with open arms are two examples that come immediately to mind. Um, but also, as usual, our employees rise to the occasion to serve our residents. As a testament to that, we received over 100 nominations for the Kathy Osterman Awards this year. This was across 34 departments and sister agencies, and these nominations represented the employees who didn't just show up to do the work every day, but went above and beyond to support our residents and other employees. So it is a pleasure to be here today to recognize these employees for the hard and important work that they do. I'd like to thank all of the department and agency heads who took the time to write thoughtful nominations detailing the important work that employees in their department undertook this year. Thank you also to the evaluation committee. I'm gonna take a moment to name them. Uh, Perla Gonzalez with Parks, Tom McCone with CTA, Tamara Starks, formerly with BACP, but now with Parks. Um, Femi Sequoia with Water Management and Kimberly Ross with DHR. Um, I'll speak on behalf of the committee to say that it was an honor and a pleasure to read through all of the submissions. I'd also like to thank Mayor Lightfoot for reintroducing these awards. Last year was the first time in several years that these awards took place, and it was because Mayor Lightfoot saw the huge amount of work that employees were putting in to assist during the pandemic and even now with the, re uh, with the recovery. She recognized that the work we do can often be thankless, and bringing these awards back was one way of rectifying that. Most importantly, of course, I'd like to congratulate all of the winners for stepping up and demonstrating what it means to be a public servant. The work you do matters, so thank you. And now it is my honor to introduce Mayor Lightfoot, who would also like to make some remarks. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Come on, come on, come on. This is a joyous occasion. Let's try it one more time. Good afternoon, everyone. All right, that's a little better, a little better. <clears throat> it's an honor for me to be here um, at this awards ceremony. Um, I did not have the privilege of meeting uh, former Alderman and Commissioner uh, Kathy Osterman in life, but I certainly heard a lot about her um, when I was a city employee um, and through uh, many, many years since. And probably uh, a year and a half ago, um, my wife Amy, the First Lady, um, we started talking about the fact that our workers have done some remarkable things on the front lines every single day. And we wanted to make sure that we honored them. And so it didn't take a lot of conversation for us to say, we need to reinstitute uh, the Kathy Osterman Awards. And we reached out, of course, to um, Alderman uh, Harry Osterman uh, to talk to him and made sure that we had his buy-in, but importantly, that we were doing what was necessary to really embody the spirit of his beloved mother uh, and public servant uh, to our city. And so here we are now in our second year, um, and we expect this to carry on for every year um, thereafter. We, we, as I said, there are people in our city uh, who are doing remarkable work through very difficult uh, set of circumstances. And we want to make sure that the word thankless um, isn't in anybody's job description. Um, this annual awards luncheon is a way that we say thank you um, to our employees uh, for all that they do. Uh, this tradition has been a cherished one, as you heard, for over 40 years in our city, and we're happy to um, breathe new life um, into this awards. Last year's uh, ceremony honored our employees' personal sacrifices and hard work to carry us through the pandemic. This year, we honor the employees who are bringing us from the post-pandemic recovery to prosperity. City employees across every department and agency have helped us walk the path from uncertainty to promise in our city. They've been there every single day for our residents, and we need to make sure that we uplift and recognize their service and sacrifice. And that is because they are committed, passionate, and most importantly, also resilient. We can't forget that our city workers are themselves moms and dads, um, sons and daughters, 
who are experiencing the same kind of challenges and traumas that our residents are as well. And all the more reason why we need to take a moment to reflect and to say thank you. We asked so much of our employees during the pandemic, um, and they delivered time and time again. And through, all, through it all, our city's innovators, mentors, leaders, support staff, and everyone in between embody the spirit of resiliency. No matter what obstacles come our way, we serve Chicago and our residents faithfully and proudly, just as Kathy Osterman did. Kathy Osterman, for those of you who don't know, was a lifelong public servant who led with a compassionate heart and bold vision for our future. In 1987, she was elected alderman of the 48th Ward, and among her many accomplishments, she notably pushed for the passage of the Human Rights Ordinance. Now, I just want to stop and think about this for a moment. In 1987, many of us were afraid to even say to our families that we were a member of the LGBTQ plus community, and back then we just said gay. It was a frightening time. It was a time when people all across the country were dying because of the HIV AIDS epidemic. And the fact that Kathy Osterman stood up in that moment to say, this is something that we must do, we must live our values as a city, I think even underscores all the more what a remarkable person and leader she was. She fearlessly advocated for uh, the LGBTQ plus community and other marginalized communities of her time. She always stood on the side of the people, serving on councils for aging and disability, education, economic development, and environmental protections. And in 1989, um, she was appointed to be the director of the Mayor's Office for Special Events, what we now know as DCASE where she continued her service to our city by bringing in tourists and organizing festivals that we cherish to this day. This is a woman who loved Chicago, and we are the better for it. Her service left a positive, indelible mark on our city, and it's her dynamic, passionate legacy of public service that we recall in our celebration today. We are honoring 12 Kathy Osterman Award recipients who were outstanding in COVID recovery, or were outstanding innovators, mentors, leaders, or support staff. And I will emphasize the support staff. We can't get the work done without you and without each and every one of them. And it's an honor uh, that we are celebrating uh, with you today. And as you hear more about their work and its impact on our city, I'm sure you're going to recognize exactly why their colleagues said, yes, they are deserving of praise and, importantly, a recognition through this award. So I say as a former city worker myself, my wife uh, worked here in this library for 19 years, um, we understand the importance of recognizing the workers who deliver every single day for our residents, our great colleagues, um, great teammates, uh, and I'm very proud to be here with you today. So I'm going to turn it over to uh, another city employee who carries on Kathy Osterman's tradition of service, and that is her son, 48th Ward Alderman Harry Osterman. Thank you, Mayor Lightfoot, um, honored guests. I want to really thank Mayor Lightfoot and First Lady Amy Eshelman for bringing this award service back to the city of Chicago. Um, it honors my mother and her legacy, but most importantly, it honors the dedication and hard work of city employees, many of whom do the job every single day without acknowledgement in the press, uh, or in the public, but really make this city, community by community, successful. And your hard work and dedication, especially this last couple years, um, has just been outstanding and amazing. I want to recognize first my family who's with me today. My brother, Matt Osterman, city employee, outstanding father, his wife, Jane, and their son, Kyle. My wife, Peggy Osterman, and my mom's brother, Uncle Billy, along with Senator Bill Maravitz and Mike Vellini, dear friends of my mom. Um, today's a very special day for all of you.
Today's a very special day for all of you, the honorees, your co-workers, your friends, and your family who see the hard work that you put in. And as an alderman, I know how that goes, and I know how the last couple years have been. So I'm really just proud to be here with you. Um, this time of year is very heartfelt for me and my family because my mom died 30 years ago last week. And um, her legacy lives on in many, many different ways. But who she was was really about unity, dedication, inclusion, and what we can do together. It was never about what she could do as one person. It was about what people together can do to help improve a neighborhood or help improve a city. Um, that started at a very young age for her when she was a young girl, grew up in New York, grew up in Montreal after that, where she had, um, many of her neighbors were Holocaust survivors. And she learned at a very, very young age about justice and about fairness and about make sure that you stand up for people. She carried that on as a mom in Edgewater, where she wanted to make sure that her two sons had a place to go. And she worked with other moms, because moms do most of the work, um, to renovate the, the Broadway Armory so the kids in the community could play in a safe environment. Um, her work then led her to the state's attorney's office, where she worked with Richard M. Daley before he became mayor. And she headed up a unit called the community unit that really wanted to make sure that communities understood what the state's attorney's office can do to help support them, victims of crime. That put her in communities across the city of Chicago and Cook County, where she learned about every neighborhood and background. And she took from that the strength and stories of people. And she wanted to make that office work for the people of the county and the community. And she brought those friends and allies with her, and that led her into public life, where she followed Marion Vellini as alderman of the 48th Ward. She did not seek public office. She did it out of duty, because she wanted to carry on the good work that was started. And as Mayor Lightfoot had mentioned, it was a very challenging time across the world, but across the country, with those living with HIV and AIDS and those that were dying in isolation without support and help. And my mom worked side by side to support those in the gay and lesbian community. Every Thanksgiving, Billy Maravitz and a guy named John Henry Damsky, who was a famous, in Chicago, a famous author for Windy City Times, would come over for Thanksgiving dinner and they would talk. But she used the experience of others to be a champion. And Mayor Lightfoot touched on it. Back in the 80s, it was not an easy conversation to have. And she took people um, who were not familiar with the community and really had a humanizing effect and showed them what it meant. And she worked with Harold Washington at the time and then Gene Sawyer to enact that legislation that gave basic human rights to the LGBT community. Things that we now take for granted today, but it started back then and it started by working together with people, which is what she did. Um, when Harold Washington passed, she tried to unify and use her leadership to heal and bring people together at a very challenging time in our city's history. She went on to become alderman, or as alderman, but basically she, she got the job that she wanted to do, her dream job, which was to be the director of special events, and use her talents of bringing people together to have fun and showcase the city. Um, all of that was her passion in life. It woke her up every day, um, but her legacy lives on. It lives on in her family. It lives on in her nephew who's here with us, Kyle, who's a senior at Peyton High School, captain of the football team, on the basketball team, but he uses his leadership, not for himself, but to really lift up other students, to make sure that the freshmen and sophomore, the kids who are not feeling included, are being brought in. Um, I want to thank one person and recognize one person today. There's a lot of amazing winners who I've worked with in my life in city government, but Dave Adams from Special Events, um, he's family to us. And he's worked for special events for over 32 years and worked his way up like many of you have done through your time in city government to really be a leader. He's the one when it's summertime doing the parades at six o'clock in the morning so that people can celebrate. But during COVID, he was the one who helped lift up 
these sites so that people can be vaccinated. Incredible, incredible work. Um, David, congratulations. We're very proud of you. Your mom and dad would be proud of you. So would my mom. So with that, I know you're all hungry, um, but it's an honor for me to be here with you today. Um, I appreciate again this award in my mom's honor. And to all the departments who I've worked with and all the employees who are being recognized, congratulations. The last couple years have been an incredibly challenging time. You've made it a little bit easier for City of Chicago residents who have um, relied on you, counted on you, and thank you even though they're not here with us today. God bless and enjoy the luncheon. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Monica Mueller, and I'm the Vice President of Government Affairs for Motorola Solutions. For first, let me start by thanking Mayor Lightfoot for reviving this very special awards program. Motorola has been involved for a number of years prior to today, and when I go back, I'm going to add up uh, the, the number of years because I do believe I was involved in, in the beginning. And Alderman, what a wonderful, wonderful day to remember your mother's legacy and to celebrate today's winners. For those of you that may not be aware, Motorola Solutions is a 94-year-old company that started right here in the city of Chicago. In fact, not too far from where we sit today. And while we operate in 65 countries of the world, Chicago is home to our worldwide headquarters. So when I was thinking about today's event this past weekend, it took me back to my days early in my career, about 36 years ago to be exact, when I got my start in government. And I think this experience gave me an even deeper respect and even deeper appreciation for what you do and all the extra miles that you go each and every day for the city of Chicago and particularly during these very challenging times in the last few years. And I'm especially grateful as a resident of the city of Chicago. When I started with Motorola many, many years ago, I very vividly remember a conversation that I had with Bob Galvin, who at the time was the CEO of Motorola Solution and the, so and the son of the founder of our company. And he said to me how important it was that throughout my career at Motorola, I always remember the importance of recognizing our civil servants. And so as I stand here today, I'm reminded of that conversation. And this spirit is the fabric of what's in our company that makes us so proud to be able to sponsor this award. In my job at Motorola, I have the opportunity to do many, many really, really cool things. But I'll tell you, nothing is as cool as being able to be part of this awards program and to be able to be a part of recognizing all your great work today. So thank you for the opportunity. Enjoy your day. Please accept our sincerest congratulations from our company and all of our employees. Thank you. So thanks to everyone who came up, and that concludes the first portion of the Kathy Osterman Award Ceremony. That's right. Okay, now, the moment we've been waiting for, we're going to break for lunch, and we'll see you shortly after. <laughs>
All right, welcome back everyone. How was lunch? Was it pretty good? What, what about the dessert? Pretty good? I think Karen had two of them. I only had one. That's all I had. Um, without further ado, we are going to start presenting today's Kathy Osterman Awards. So it is our pleasure to introduce the recipients of the Outstanding COVID Recovery Award. Although every employee supported the citywide COVID recovery, this category honors those employees who truly went above and beyond their regular duties to tirelessly support our residents. Now, everybody is important, but first up, we have Christopher Shields. He is the Assistant Commissioner in the Department of Public Health. Let's tell you a little bit about Christopher. He's been a government employee for the past 11 years and actually got his start as a paramedic firefighter. Under Christopher's direction, the CDPH Emergency Preparedness Program is considered a national leader by the CDC, and our city is certainly better for it. In his COVID recovery efforts, Christopher was an integral leader for a number of high-impact operations, from commanding the mass vaccination site at the United Center to developing the alternate care facility at McCormick place, Christopher was at the forefront of the city's COVID response. The work that Christopher did not only got our city through the pandemic, but laid the groundwork for how to best respond to future crises. Please welcome Christopher Shields to the dais. The next person being, excuse me, being recognized for their outstanding COVID recovery work is David Adams. <laughs> David is a cultural affairs. <laughs> David is a cultural affairs coordinator at DCase, and he's been a government employee for 32 years. In fact. Earlier in his career, Dave actually worked for Kathy Osterman. So although David has worked in the operations division of DCase for decades, his commitment to our city brought him to new places during the pandemic. In the citywide COVID response, David was redeployed to OEMC, where he served as a leader in the food operations restaurant revitalization program. He also served as a liaison for the implementation of six mobile COVID-19 testing sites and has worked closely with CDPH to help those sites run smoothly. His colleagues say that David truly went above and beyond his regular job duties to support residents during this time and that he can always be relied upon to go the extra mile for the city. Please welcome and congratulate Dave Adams. Congrats once again to David, and now it's time to introduce the recipients of the Outstanding Leader Award. The winners of this category are supervisors or team leaders whose work has been particularly supportive and inspirational. Our first winner is Christina McGlean, the Deputy Commissioner for the Mayor's Office for People with Disabilities. Christina has served MOPD for nine years, leading several initiatives throughout her time. Notably, she helped to successfully launch the Access Officer Program, naming a point person responsible for accessibility in every department and sister agency. She was also instrumental in the launch of MOPD's Career Center, which is already connecting Chicagoans with disabilities to employment opportunities. With MOPD, Christina has built a culture of support by developing a department-wide mentoring program. MOP Commissioner Arfa says that Christina makes many valuable contributions to the city while also serving as a role model, exhibiting that a person with a disability in a leadership role can be effective and successful. 
Christina's work and impact makes our city all the more inclusive and accepting. Please welcome and congratulate Christina. Congratulations, and our next outstanding leader is Douglas McLinn. <laughs> Douglas has the honor of being the principal at Chicago Vocational Career Academy at CPS and has been a government employee for an incredible 26 years. Principal McLinn is, uh, has a proven track record of leading transformational change in the school setting. In fact, he led two underperforming high schools from a probationary status to a good standing within just one calendar year. Principal McLinn's colleagues say that he is a results-driven visionary with exemplary skills for building enthusiastic teams and achieving goals. Moreover, Douglas is not only a school leader, but a community leader, encouraging community partnerships to support students throughout the school year and especially during the pandemic. Please welcome and congratulate Principal Douglas McLean. Our next category is Outstanding Support Staff. This award recognizes the unsung heroes in city departments. These colleagues are always ready to lend a helping hand to their teams in humble service to their city. And our first Outstanding Support Staff is Elisa Rosario, the Assistant to the Commissioner in the Department of Water Management, or DWM. Elisa has been a government employee for an impressive 17 years. Although WDM is a complex department, Elisa has developed a deep knowledge of their operations as well as their key staff and partners. Elisa serves as the first point of contact in the water department for the public and aldermanic offices. As you can imagine, fielding all the calls to WDM's main office line is not an easy task, but Elisa is an expert and is up for the challenge. DWM Commissioner Chang says it takes a unique person to help both the public and elected officials navigate the department and secure these critical services, and Elisa is that unique person to do it. She dutifully works with integrity and dedication, often working overtime and giving her all to serve our city and to support the residents of this city. Please welcome and congratulate Elisa Rosario. Our next outstanding support staff is Norman White. Norman is the hate crime victim advocate at the Chicago Commission on Human Relations, or CCHR, and he's been with the city of Chicago for an incredible 25 years. Norman is known as a positive person who always sees an opportunity when presented with a challenging situation. This, as well as his kind, giving, and genuine nature, not only inspires his team to take on a can-do attitude, but also allows him to meet victims of hate crimes where they are. His allyship, advocacy, and friendship to individuals who have experienced bigotry and hate is truly invaluable and he's known to personally go out of his way on his own time after hours or on the weekends to visit them and their families with flowers and a balloon in hand. 
Norman's impact continues to make Chicago a better and more welcoming place. Please welcome and congratulate Norman White. Congratulations to Norman, and our final Outstanding Support Staff awardee is Mondine Harding, who has served for the City of Chicago for 33 years in the Department of Law, Budget Office, and the Office of the Mayor. I think we can say this, Mondine is the definition of an unsung hero. In the Mayor's Office, Mondine is the first person new employees meet and the last person they communicate with after they transition. In between, she offers unparalleled support to her team and anyone who needs her help and works way past her expected work hours to ensure city government runs as smooth as possible. In addition, Mondine is known to take on roles that are usually filled by several people in a city department without complaint and has mentored countless young employees as they navigate their careers. Outside of work, Mondine continues to be an incredible community pillar. Whether you're a city employee, one of her five children, or one of her seven grandchildren, you can always count on Mondine for help and support. The city of Chicago is truly privileged to have an employee as dedicated as she is. Please welcome and congratulate Mondine Hardy. Our next category is the Outstanding Innovator Award. This award recognizes the employees who think outside the box. They take the initiative to create new systems, processes, and programs in response to challenges and opportunities. And our first Outstanding Innovator is Donald Biederman, an electrical mechanic at the Office of Public Safety Administration, or OPSA. Now, Donald has been an electrical mechanic with the City of Chicago for an impressive 25 years, a career that first took off within the Office of Emergency Management and Communications. In his role, he has taken and continues to take innovative measures to cut costs and drive radio communications in a positive direction. For these reasons, Donald has become the person his team turns to when faced with impossible problems. For example, he spent countless hours working to improve the Chicago Police Department's radio dispatch systems, a task that many said could not be done, and ended up saving the city about $4 million. I think that deserves a round of applause. He also helped change the way we connect all radio equipment, was the driving force for digitizing existing analog systems, and kept numerous repairs in-house instead of contracting externally to costly vendors. Donald has, without a doubt, improved the day-to-day -day experiences of our first responders throughout his innovation and dedication to public safety, communications, and our city. Please welcome and congratulate Donald Biederman. Our next outstanding innovator is Julie Koslowski. <laughs> Julie is an outreach coordinator based right here at Harold Washington Library. She has a distinguished career of serving Chicago teens at Chicago Public Libraries for more than eight years. And though she has served in a variety of roles, she's never lost sight of her focus, driving positive outcomes for children uh, and young people. One of Julie's most impressive innovations is Club 81. 
She led the design, launch, and implementation of this incredible program, which provides 330,000 CPS students and 21,000 teachers across 649 schools. I'm going to test you on those numbers. With expanded access to educational resources in the classroom, in the library, and at home. In many ways, Club 81 is an initiative that's been a dream for both schools and libraries for many years. Thanks to Julie's expertise, innovative spirit, and dedication to serving our city's young people, this dream was made a reality, and she's ensured that thousands of learning resources are available to CPS students wherever they are. Her work will truly change the educational landscape for youth and teachers in Chicago for the better. Please welcome and congratulate Julie Koslowski. And our final outstanding innovator this year is a woman I rode up in the elevator with today, Jadine Chow, Chief of Safety and Security at Chicago Public Schools. I told her that my wife was reading about this award, but J.D. is currently in her 11th year of service at CPS. During her term, she has tapped into her naturally innovative spirit and created better outcomes for students. For starters, she has partnered with other CPS departments and school leaders to lead one of the earliest and most progressive school discipline transformations in the country to eradicate the school-to-prison pipeline. Thanks to Jadine's leadership, arrests of students initiated at CPS schools have been reduced by more than 80%. I think that deserves a round of applause. CPS's Chose to Change mentoring program has been expanded to serve more than 1,000 youth in 2022 as opposed to 200 in 2018. And 1,000 students have been re-engaged through CPS's one-of-a-kind Back to Our Future program, which provides participants with 9 to 12 months skill-based life coaching as well as cognitive behavioral therapy. Jadine has done a phenomenal job with her work to keep CPS schools safe, and we commend her for her innovation willingness to collaborate, and laser focus on improving the lives of Chicago's young people, and you know they deserve it. Please welcome and congratulate Jadine Chow. And now it's time for our final category, the Outstanding Mentor Award. This category recognizes employees at all levels who have given back to their departments through mentorship. They support their colleagues reaching their full potential with coaching, professional development, and reaching back to lift up the next generation of city employees. And our first Outstanding Mentor Award goes to Cassandra Henderson. When you get those woos, you know it's a big deal, right? <laughs> Cassandra is the manager of the Second Chance Program at the Chicago Transit Authority. She has dedicated her entire 16-year career to public service in the city of Chicago, and over the years has supported and mentored residents, program participants, colleagues, and staff throughout her various positions. Since 2014 and during her time at the CTA, Cassandra has influenced and impacted residents by providing them with employment and career development opportunities. Many of the residents she serves experience a unique set of challenges identifying as returning residents, survivors of domestic violence, or someone experiencing homelessness. Nevertheless, Cassandra goes the extra mile to meet them where they are and help them succeed. Nearly 1,300 residents have been onboarded, trained, developed, or coached by Cassandra, and hundreds have gone on to secure full-time, temporary, or permanent employment opportunities. The CTA is lucky to have her. Please welcome and congratulate Cassandra Henderson. Congratulations. 
Okay, last but not least, I've, our other Outstanding Mentor Award goes to Dr. Stephanie Black. Dr. Black is a medical director at the Chicago Department of Health and has been with the city for 14 years. In her role, she provides direction and oversight of the planning and implementation of infectious diseases, epidemiology, prevention, and response activities. The list of outbreaks that she has investigated is nearly as long as her career in city government. Her research, combined with the work of her exceptional team, has left a lasting impact on our city. Through their collaboration with skilled nursing facilities, they achieved a 49% decrease in proportion of hospitalized cases and a 63% decrease in proportion of deaths due to COVID-19. Dr. Black's passion for any aspect of public health response to communicable diseases I have to say it is infectious. <laughs> <laughs> Great job. Thanks. 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 Um, and her dedication, though, to mentoring her team and continuing to create professional opportunities for them has never been more impactful. Our city and CDPH are so lucky to have a committed leader in Dr. Black. Please welcome and congratulate Dr. Stephanie Black. And another just big round of applause for our awardees. They all deserve it. Finally, everybody gets that woo, you know. You need that woo. <laughs> well, that concludes our awards for this afternoon, but it does not conclude our program. We would like to welcome Mayor Lightfoot back up to uh, offer a final thank you to our award recipients. Now, <clears throat> if my math serves me correctly, we had two people from CDPH and two people from CPS. Now, this is Chicago, and I'm thinking maybe I should demand a little bit of a recount if the vote was rigged. <clears throat> but in all seriousness, let's give another round of applause to these incredible public servants. <clears throat> Let me just say that on behalf of a deeply grateful city, I want to congratulate each and every one of you. Thank you um, for going the extra mile to serve our residents as well as your respective teams, your department, and your city. Um, I am honored to be uh, in your presence. In your own way, each of you embody the resiliency of Chicago, our grit and determination, um, our resolve to get things done, even through difficult obstacles. Um, your strong, committed, and passionate spirit um, has allowed our city to stand the test of time and triumph over any challenge. And we've had a lot of them in the last couple of years. So without your hard work, we simply wouldn't be uh, the city that we are today. And this is especially true now, as Chicago begins to realize the post-pandemic benefits that we worked and you worked so hard to secure. Despite the pandemic, being one of the hardest and most impactful tests of our lifetime. And I think every one of us for the rest of our lives will think about those moments, um, those hard, tough things that we had to do in service of our city. We were able to maintain our laser focus on providing residents of this great city with the city services that they needed to survive and thrive but also to improve services to ensure the next generation of Chicagoans will be just as, if not more so, resilient than this one. This is the power of public service in action. It's a force that keeps our city moving and improving. It's a vehicle that allows us to care for the needs of our residents, particularly those who are most vulnerable and most in need. And it's the passion that we all share that brings us to public service and keeps us here and rewards us every day. It's the gift that we get by giving to others. 
And as mayor, I'm thankful for all of you for making that choice. And whether it be through COVID-19 recovery efforts, mentorship, leadership, or support, collectively, you have made such a meaningful and positive difference in the lives of countless residents who may never know your name, but are going to be the beneficiaries of your hard work, your sacrifice for years to come. You have, without a doubt, carried on the torch of Kathy Osterman and the many other public servants who have come before you. To ensure that torch continues to burn bright and be passed along, I encourage each of you not only to think about who you'd like to nominate for next year's awards, but to also remember and support each other and thank your colleagues. These last years have taught us many, many lessons, chief among them that we are absolutely stronger and better together. By recognizing the hard work of our colleagues and giving them credit where credit is due, we can enhance morale, collaborate better, break down silos, and ultimately deliver that much more for our residents. Now, I neglected in my opening remarks to do two things, which is to say thank you to Motorola Solutions. And Monica, you have been such a great friend, uh, not only to uh, this important award ceremony, but just a great leader in our city. Um, I have witnessed that firsthand, so I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. I also want to thank the One Chicago Fund. Um, many of you don't even know what that is, but these are women who uh, work hard. Every time that there's a need, they say, we'll find the money to support this effort. And I just want to say thank you, thank you to the One Chicago Fund. And Lynn, you don't get off that easily. Come on up. Come on up. Ladies and gentlemen, Lynn Lockwood Murphy is going to join me on the stage, um, and I just want to uh, thank her personally in your presence. Uh, Lynn has been a tireless worker on behalf of all that's good and right in city government. She has been a champion uh, for me um, and my administration personally, um, helped us when we were shell-shocked and shot out of a cannon in April of uh, 2019, helped us stand up a transition, um, helped us um, through uh, the inauguration process and many, many other times when there was a need that she saw. Many times we didn't even recognize ourselves, but she's done tremendous work. Lynn is retiring at the end of this year. And yeah, don't, don't, don't be so excited, but I just want to say thank you on behalf of our city. Um, you have served us well, and we are grateful for it. Let's give her a round of applause. I'm going to invite you to say a few words. Okay, I had no idea this was going to happen. None. Um, thank you. This has been a complete honor, and I'm going to try very hard not to cry. When I started with the One Chicago Fund over 11 years ago, my first big event was dedicating Maggie Daly Park. And most of you don't know, I worked for Maggie for many years, and she was a huge mentor and a huge person in my life. And then to end it with an event, honoring your mom, Kathy Osterman, who was also a huge, important person in my life. It's just magical for me. So thank you, thank you, Mayor. This has been a really huge moment for me, and I'm shocked, so thank you. Thanks. And now, I'll turn it back over to our MCs. Thank you so much, Mayor. It's good to see you. It's so good to see everybody here again on this wonderful, inspirational day. Um, and we hope to see you again next year, honoring more of the city's leaders uh, doing so much for their city. And at this time, we would like to invite the winners of the Osterman Awards to go to the back step and repeat back there. JD is waving his arm, his hands. Uh, if you can, that you can take pictures back there. 
Fantastic. Thanks a lot, everyone. Hope you had a great time.